Well, it's, obviously there's that potential. Uh, I typically believe that people are rational actors. Uh, of course, we see acts of irrationality from time to time, but I mean, earnings are, are really strong. Uh, global growth conditions are very strong. We've, uh, for the first time in a long time, seeing the IMF revise upwards uh, global growth figures. Um, we've got a much more outward-looking uh, emerging market economies uh, in terms of their engagement with international trade policy. You know, we just completed the TPP-11. Um, so we've got a lot of very positive moves that are happening, and I think markets are tapping into that, as well as if you look at the states, uh, obviously the decisions in relation to tax policy, the reform that's happening there. So th that's providing the right conditions for that upward uh, increase in terms of uh, the Dow and, and just the heightened level of, of, uh, of interest that people have in, in investing into the future. Now, of course, things can change. Um, I don't think that there's, and certainly the advice that I'm getting, th there's not a huge gap in terms of where the market is and where expectations are. Uh, so then if you start to say, well, what about these underlying factors? Well, you know, the Syria conflict's been around for a long time. Uh, issues in respect of the Middle East have been around for a long time. Uh, instability on the Korean Peninsula has been around for a long time. So I'm not sure that there's actually that big a change that would dissuade people from thinking there's a brighter economic future ahead. Likewise, if anything, Europe's the level of uncertainty and volatility around Europe emanating both from one market conditions. I mean, the ECB, by and large, if you look at their track record, have done an outstanding job at managing what potentially could have been a very serious problem. And two, even in terms of uh, asylum seeker policy, Europe seems to be managing, you know, muddling their way through. And so I think that those as well present a pretty rosy picture for the future. There are typical go-to areas of the market where you look for political risk, and one of them is traditionally oil. Yeah. The problem with uh, any elevated risk around oil is that there's been so much supply in recent years because of the, all the shale producers in the States. And to come in on, on how there could be a tipping point now for the oil industry based on all of the capex decisions by the oil majors to cut back on exploration efforts in the face of some challenges. Yeah. So, so I, I think we, we've, we've had an oil, a, a risk premium in oil uh, in the early parts of this decade from 2010 to 2013, 14, pretty between five and, and $10 a barrel, uh, where there was a shortage uh, of, of uh, supply and really the, the demand uh, was increasing quite, uh, quite significantly and, and prices rose to, to mitigate that demand. I think we, uh, we're starting to have a, a bit of a risk premium in, in oil, but, uh, but I think the volatility is still extremely low. The VIX and the oil volatility is probably at, at, at historic, historic lows. Um, from the capital program, I do see that uh, in the medium term, we, we have underinvested in, in, uh, in the business significantly. We, uh, we used to add an average of three to four million barrels a day through major projects. Uh, 30 or 40 a year over the last 10 years. In the last three years, we've curtailed that by about half, and the, the oil that's added is, is a million barrels a day or, or, or so. And with that, it, uh, we are having uh, still a continuous uh, uh, demand increase, but the best over the last uh, three years, almost 5% increase. We're getting to 100 million barrels a day of demand, which is another, <clears throat> another peak. So I do see that uh, you know, we could see in the medium term a uh, shortage of oil and another instability due to oil. I'll just talk back at the liquidity point. Uh, I, I agree. I think the liquidity is, is the issue that's propelling the markets and reducing the, the volatility significantly. Uh, but, but I think the issue that we don't understand fully is, uh, is the effect of quantitative easing on, on, on the markets. It's something that's relatively new, uh, adopted by uh, really the OECD countries and negative interest rates in, in some areas of the Eurozone. And now we've seen the positive impact of, of that. I, uh, I think taking it away, uh, we, we don't know what the negative impacts could be or, or the side effects could be. It's been, you know, we've been on steroids effectively for the last four or five years. Yeah. And this, this is kind of a, we're not sure what the the side effects are, if there's negative side effects. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.